you have any questions, please feel free to post them in the questions box and we will answer throughout the presentation as well as leave some time towards the end um, for additional questions. Um, so without further ado, I'd like to pass it over to Devin and Kevin. All right, well, thank you, Allison. Welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us for the Auto Buying in 2020 Educational Webinar. The content for today's presentation will be divided into the following three categories. How to be prepared, do your homework. This may sound simple, but by taking the time to familiarize yourself with what you can expect and what you want to accomplish, it will pay off in a big way and your future self will thank you. Um, step two, understanding the finance process. So make sure that you are confident and in control of your money during the auto buying process. And step three, the benefits of auto buying services partnering with professionals who have your best interest in mind. So let's get started. The first thing you want to do when you consider purchasing a vehicle is to build a list of at least three cars that meet your needs and fall within your budget. If you're planning on buying a vehicle that is at least five years old, consider a certified pre-owned that may still have some of the original warranties and provide peace of mind. It's important to know what you want as far as MPG, safety features, and other options. We'll get to miles per gallon in a minute, but let's talk about safety features. We all see those advertised safety ratings, but what does it all mean? Understand that crash ratings are calculated on a compounding scale. For example, you actually triple your risk of injury between cars with a five-star crash rating and a three-star crash rating. Your insurance company knows this. It may be surprising to see how much your premium would be or a similar model vehicle. Be sure to do your side-by-side -side comparisons. On the spectrum of used cars, private party purchases are often thought of as the best deals. However, dealerships and auto buying services will have done a thorough inspection of the vehicle that can guide you through the auto buying process. And of course, the history report. Make sure you always have a copy of the vehicle's history report. Carfax is a well-known resource that can reveal vital information about a vehicle, like whether the odometer has been rolled back or if it has a salvage title, which means it has been declared a total loss by the insurance company. Always have this report in your hand before negotiating a deal. The test drive. Test driving the car is the best way to, to determine if it feels right and if it will fit the needs of you and your passengers comfortably. We have included several websites for reference to help you with your research. Next is determining what you can afford. And this is a big one. Always take the time to review and update your monthly budget before beginning your auto buying process. Be sure to include fixed and variable expenses, like seasonal expenses, that could put you in a financially vulnerable spot if you haven't planned for them. There's also other auto-related expenses to consider. Auto insurance, gas, maintenance, oil changes and repairs. Okay, so the first task we've discussed when starting the auto buying process is to make a list of at least three cars. Now you can call your insurance agent and let them know which vehicles you have in mind. They may give you valuable insight into your choices. Yes, the miles per gallon. This is an all too often exaggerated number based on a controlled environment. You can search places like fueleconomy.gov for more up-to-date information on what consumers are actually getting on fuel economy. Compare that to the number of miles per gallon your current vehicle averages, and be sure to include the cost difference in your budget. And lastly, maintenance, oil changes, and repairs. Don't forget to consider that used cars are more likely to require additional costs, maintenance, and have unexpected repairs. So make sure to budget accordingly setting aside each month money into a savings account and be ready for these expenses so you don't have to put them on a credit card. Kevin's going to go over and give us some other items to consider. Thank you, Javon. So there's a lot of things to think about and my best advice is to do your homework before you go to a dealer. As I've been a dealer for 36 years, dealers love to play on your emotions, not intellect. So there's many things to sit down and pencil out and think about, such as do you have a down payment? Well, why is that important? 
every thousand dollars you put down affects your monthly payment approximately 15 to 18 dollars a month so the more money you save up and put down the less your monthly payment is number two trade in or sell your current vehicle dealers including myself love trade-ins we like trade-ins because we're only negotiating with one person to buy the vehicle versus going to an auto auction where i'm negotiating against 50 or 75 other buyers there so we would like to have your vehicle of course we want to take it in for a fair value but we don't want to give you a retail price for it so again that's some homework you should do you should go out and do a little looking on auto trader and on true car to see what the market value of your car is before you accept someone's trade-in value registration fees these are fees that dealers all dealers collect and pass on to the california department of motor vehicles whether it's tax and license or any other documentary type fees for registration so dmv .ca.gov forward slash free calculator will give you an idea of approximately what your payments, excuse me, what's the, what the amount you're going to be spending on registration fees. Auto insurance, get a quote beforehand. We've had many clients come in over the last 35 years ready to drive off in a vehicle, check their auto insurance on an all-wheel drive vehicle and find out that it's astronomical as they're trying to buy a vehicle for their 16-year-old son or daughter. So do that homework in advance so you don't get stuck in a situation of going out, acquiring a vehicle, and then calling your auto insurance the next day and finding out that it's an unreasonable premium for the vehicle you just bought. Vehicle warranty, another item to consider. As Javon said, there's new vehicle warranties and pre-owned vehicle warranties. Know what is covered by the manufacturer's warranty. Some vehicles are covered for six years, 100,000 miles. Some vehicles that only applies, that warranty only applies to the first owner, as an example with Kia. So if you buy a new Kia, you get the six year, 100,000 mile, but if you're the second owner, you only get a five year, 60,000 mile. So do the homework on what is the warranty on that particular vehicle. And on a pre-owned vehicle, if you're buying a pre-owned vehicle from a dealer, find out what is covered by the dealer's warranty. Extended warranties. This is a great price point to discuss. There is value here to get an extended warranty if the price matches the value. You can find at a retail dealership the warranty price may be $3,000, and if you check with Cal Coast Credit Union on that exact same coverage, you may be at $1,100 or $1,500, or $1,500, so the prices dramatically vary. Mechanical repair coverage, MRC which is the credit union's extended warranty, has fabulous credit union pricing. It's way better than any other warranty out there, in my opinion, for price to what is covered. It's a great investment to protect your vehicle. Vehicles are made up of thousands of parts, and it makes sense to purchase the MRC on most vehicles that you're looking at. Let's talk about loan protection products. California Coast Credit Union has a menu of really well-priced, value-added items. First one is their Cal Coast Guard Plus program, which covers you if you have a loss of life, disability, involuntary unemployment, family leave. This protects you for a period of time, and Javon, I'm not quite sure how long that time is, but I know it will protect the member for several months on monthly payments if they have one of these items come up, correct? Correct. Great. And then the Guaranteed Asset Protection, GAP, that is another product that the credit union offers. Basically, what this covers you for is that if your vehicle is totaled for any reason or stolen and not recovered, the Credit Union Guaranteed Asset Protection product will cover the difference between what the insurance company is willing to pay for that vehicle and the outstanding balance on your loan. And today, as aggressive as these insurance companies are being, that could be a three to $5,000 spread that if you do not protect yourself with the GAP product, you are then liable for the difference because the insurance company doesn't set the value to your loan. They set the value to the vehicle. So again, that's a really great product that uh, at the price point the credit union offers it for, typically it's between three and $500. I think it's a wonderful protection. 
finishing up your homework, determine how much car you can afford before you go to a dealer. So many folks go out, do their shopping at the dealership. I suggest you do the shopping from your home. Grab a cup of coffee, sit down in front of your PC and your homework so that you're not getting there trying to make a logical decision in an emotionary, an emotional situation. Buying a car is fun, but doing your homework in advance, figuring all this out is very important. As Javon said, research a few vehicles. If you're looking for a mid-market vehicle and you're comparing a Toyota Camry to a Honda Accord to a Nissan Altima, research the safety records, the fuel economy, uh, Google that vehicle and see if there are any outstanding uh, complaints by consumers on the vehicle. Check with your insurance company on the different uh, insurance rates for those similar vehicles. And I think you'll find that um, it, it's, it's important to do that homework to know what vehicle really makes the most sense for you. Also consider the additional cost of tax and license and future repairs. So it's a good thing to sit down and pencil all these expenses in advance so you know exactly where you are and then you'll be ready to take the next step and you won't get stuck with a vehicle that two days later after you purchased it, you're going, why did I end up paying $7.95 per month for a vehicle that I cannot afford? All right. So that was great information. Thank you, Kevin. So what's the next step? Financing. So you've picked up the car, you've done your homework, now you're at the dealership, and you're ready to talk about financing. Many people who can actually afford the car outright choose to finance based on the low interest rates. So now you're at the dealership, and you're ready to talk to the loan underwriter. It's also a good idea to understand, the, consider the uh, perspective of everyone who's involved in this deal. So you find the car, they invite you to the office and you sit down and I know what you're thinking. I have a reason why I deal with my credit score is. So why are these finance people taking so long to get me approved? They're assessing the risk of loaning you money based on the following criteria. We call them the three C's, capacity, character, and collateral. So for capacity, they're asking is, can the borrower afford this debt? If you're financing, a general rule of thumb is to spend no more than 15% of your monthly take-home pay on a vehicle. They're looking and calculating different ratios. You'll hear ratios like DTI or PTI or disposable income. DTI is your debt to income ratio. PTI is your payment to income ratio. And disposable income is your net income minus expenses. Also consider all debt on a credit report is deemed yours, even if you're a co-signer. Meaning if you have co-signed for another vehicle, they're calculating your budget to see if you can afford an additional car payment. The next thing they're looking at is character. What is the likelihood of repayment based on history? Often auto lenders are hesitant to lend if there's no prior auto financing history, or they may require a co-signer on the loan. They're looking for stability, uh, employment stability, your time at residence, and your credit history. And the last thing they're looking at is the actual collateral, the, the vehicle. What is the relation between the loan amount requested and the value of the collateral? Is there equity? What is the collateral's model year in relation to the loan term requested? The lender may be concerned that the vehicle will depreciate faster than the vehicle is paid down. And lastly, make sure you're buying the, uh, the car for you and not someone else. The lender is taking a leap of faith that the information you've provided about who will be driving the vehicle is accurate. All right, let's talk a little bit about uh, the types of transactions you might inquire. Usually you'll see two transactions, these are purchases or refinances. California Coast Credit Union uses Kelly Blue Book for their purchases and refinances. There's usually different types. You're gonna see either a refinance, a lease buyout, or a cash out on a free and clear title the purchase price. Sales tax can often take people by surprise. For an example, an 8% sales tax on a $30,000 vehicle is $2,400, and cities and counties often add their own tax on top of the state tax. So estimate that you'll need to come up with about 10% above the agreed purchase price. 
And then Kevin also mentioned the trade-in. This is a very costly mistake for many people who get excited about the new car, but don't take the time to get to know what their trade-in is actually worth. Again, Kelly Blue Book offers excellent calculators to help you with that information. Uh, down payments, always important. If you, especially if you have limited credit, a down payment can improve your chances of approval. So let's get into the actual um, refinancing. Whenever you refinance, always make sure to get a 10-day payoff, not the statement balance. The 10-day payoff includes the principal and the interest accrued up to date, plus the interest that accrues over the next 10 days. So why 10 days? When you refinance a vehicle, the new lender must wait three days by law before sending out your payoff checks. It is a time when you have the right to cancel your new loan. Once this legal holding period is over, a check will be sent to the current lender. And then always, always check with your lender to be sure the loan shows a zero balance. Anytime you refinance, you can expect to pay a DMV title transfer fee of $15. Vehicle owners have 30 days from the date of the purchase to complete the vehicle title transfer. Another common uh, transaction we do at the credit union is, is a lease buyout. So it's important um, to find out if the payoff statement from the leasing company includes the taxes. Oftentimes they don't. Was the tax code in the payoff? If not, California Coast will collect the taxes at the time of the funding, plus the DMV title transfer fees and any other applicable fees like smog. Cash out on a free and clear title. So what this is, because auto loans are collateralized or a secured loan, they tend to have lower interest rates than unsecured loans. Sometimes people will elect to take out a loan from the equity they have paid off on a paid off vehicle to pay off a more expensive debt, like a higher interest rate credit card. I always uh, caution people when taking this uh, option because it may, the rate may look good on paper, but now you could possibly end up with an additional car payment. And if you're not careful to pay off that high interest rate loan that you are intended to, you could end up with two loans. Uh, the next thing we'll talk about is uh, the vehicle registration fees. These are pretty straightforward. Uh, deal, the dealer usually handles the collection of the tax and license, tax title and licensing fees. Uh, whenever it's a private party purchase, a lease buyout, a refinance, or cash out on a free clear title, the seller and the buyer must be present together to sign. Uh, we do not do cash out on purchases, only free and clear titles and refinances, and we don't do any out of state registration. And then Kevin's gonna talk a little bit more about how to get pre-approved. Absolutely. Getting pre-approved I think is paramount in the automobile buying process. Why? Because you want to know when you walk into a dealership how much you're pre-approved for, what your monthly payments are, how much you plan to put down on that vehicle. At Cal Coast, it's really simple. They give you a, a full menu of ways to qualify for the auto loan that you're looking for. Especially today with the COVID situation, we all want to be as careful as possible and we all want to be cognizant of keeping social distance. So my phone, you can call the member service center. It's very quick. They'll completely walk you through the process, get applied. Typically it takes 12 to 24 hours to get an answer back from the lending department, but it's very, very quick and easy. You can go online. Let's say you're working till six o'clock this evening. After work, you can hop online, fill out an application, submit it, and usually by the next day, you'll have a decision from the underwriting department. In person, you can visit a branch location, although I will tell you at this point in time, I believe the credit union is really insisting that you do the phone or the online because they're trying to limit the number of people in the branch at any time, and it just makes it much more difficult. But I'm sure that if you have a situation where you can't call in, you can't be, go online, I'm sure if you talk to a branch manager, I'm sure they would try and help you out and, and, and help, help you in person. And then, of course, there's also the mobile application. So, you know, well-qualified well borrowers also can request what's called a drive your deal check. What that is, is a pre-approval check 
for a specific amount. So let's say you apply for a $40,000 auto loan, you get approved, you now have a form that can be accepted at majority of the franchise dealers in town, including our company, New Cars Inc., uh, to spend that money at that point in time. So again, it really does give you more negotiating power to go in and get pre-approved in advance of going to the dealership. Because when you get to the dealership, now the dealer knows that we have a person that can acquire a vehicle. So it, it, it helps you put you in a much better negotiating position by being pre-approved. So I suggest when you walk into the dealer, if you are pre-approved, keep that under your hat. I wouldn't go in and go, I'm pre-approved for $40,000. You'll start seeing the salesperson start wringing his hands going, yay, I have someone that I can put into a car. Let's get into what to expect at a dealership. Again, Javon and I have mentioned this several times, do your research before you go in. Car buying is a two-part process. Well, I'm gonna break that down into a three-part process because I want you to remember one thing. Buying a vehicle is one process. Selling your vehicle is the second process. The paperwork part, the finance is the third part. You will find that most dealers like to lump this into a one-part process where they're selling you a new car, taking your car in trade, and telling you what the monthly payment is, all in a process that they call a four-square process. So slow down a little bit when you get to that point after you've gone into the dealership, you've test driven the vehicle, you've allowed them to appraise your trade in, you've decided, boy, this vehicle really works for us, it makes sense, it's in our budget, then handle this as three separate items. What am I gonna pay for the new car? What are the rebates and incentives on that car? Is that a competitive price? Number two, what are they giving me for my trade-in? Is that in line with what Kelly Blue Book says is a fair trade-in value? Are they trying to steal my trade? Then don't drop your guard at that point in time. You still have another process to go through, which is the finance department. Many people go, whew, okay, it's all over. I, I found my car. I've got the right amount for the car. I got my trade-in handled. I'm done. Well, no, now you're going to go into finance, and in finance, the dealer has a whole menu of other products that they want to talk to you about. Extended warranty, paint and fabric, low jack, etch guard, pre-approval pre service, many, many items for you to now think about again on how much money you're going to spend in the finance department. So be prepared for that part. What to avoid? Lower payments, longer term, more interest. So dealers always try and work a transaction with you on what is your budget for monthly payments. They can take you out to 84 months, 96 months, and all they're trying to do is get to a payment that you're going to say yes at. It's classical, you know, beer budget, champagne taste. People want a nice vehicle, and they think that if they just keep going further and further out with the term, they'll get to a payment that they can afford. Well. Vehicles depreciate, and many times they'll depreciate faster than you pay down your loan, so be careful. Deferred down payment. I highly suggest, and I think the credit union does too, on post-dated checks. All you're doing is, is paying with tomorrow's money. That is not a good item to do. We will not accept a post-dated check at our company, and I would highly suggest you do not get into that situation with the dealer. Leasing options. Hey, there's some good leasing options out there and there's some crazy ones out there. Again, dealers will many times use a leasing option to get to a monthly payment that meets your budget. And the reason is, is because when you're leasing a car, all you're doing is paying for the depreciation on the car. You're not paying to own it. So if a car costs, let's say $40,000 over the term of three or four years leasing it, you're gonna pay that $40,000 car down to $20,000. So you're only paying off half the car, so thus your monthly payments are less. Now, if you own a business and you can write it off and your CPA says that's something you should do, hey, maybe then take a look at it. But for the average person, um, leasing is by far the most expensive way to acquire a vehicle. Again, next one is consider the cost of dealer products, which is what I mentioned a minute ago on the finance department, the VIN etching, paint and fabric, service contracts. Hey, there's a lot of products out there. Are all of them bad? No, I like a lot of them. I really like the LoJack Alarm product, but at the right price point. If you're looking at a LoJack system and the dealer's telling you it's $1,700, $1,800, and it should be $695, well, 
At $695, maybe it's something to consider. At $1,700, $1,800, it's just totally overpriced. And there is no set price on a particular vehicle. The automobile business is, in my opinion, very antiquated. And the reason I say that is because it's one of the few products out there that there is not a set price on. If all, how many of us are on this call today? All 93 of us went to a dealer today. Not more than 10 people would pay the same price. We all pay a different price because of the process that you go through being at, at a car dealership. Low rate versus rebate. Rebates are only offered through the dealership. Eh, that's not true. Rebates are offered by the manufacturer, not the dealer. So those are two separate items. Uh, what we find works best is get a great interest rate from your credit union. Credit unions are nonprofit and tax exempt, so they're going to have a lower cost of funds to give you a better interest rate, and then go look for the rebates online through the, through the manufacturer's websites, and you'll see what all the rebates are. No option sales contract. You can request a one-pay contract if the dealer allows. Highly suggest you get a one-pay contract. Go back to the credit union, drop off your purchase order, let the credit union finance the uh, vehicle for you. Oh, we get to talk a little bit about a company that I know, New Car Zinc. Um, my wife and I started New Car Zinc in 1986 um, out of college. My father was a Ford dealer. I'm just in love with vehicles. I was up till midnight last night working on a 65 Mustang. Um, this is not just my business, but it's my passion. I just really, really enjoy vehicles and I enjoy helping people acquire vehicles. So let's talk a little bit about New Car Zinc. Go to the next slide for me, please. So our goal is really simple. Our goal is to save credit union members time, hassle, and money. We've been with CalCoast Credit Union for over, I believe, 32 years now. We've helped hundreds and hundreds of credit union members buy five, six, seven, eight vehicles. It's just a different process. The way we handle the vehicle transaction is really very, very transparent. And we are not here to sell anything. We're here to help CalCoast members acquire a vehicle with saving time, hassle, and money. Typically, when you go to a dealer, you're going to spend five or six hours from start to finish to acquire a vehicle. Our transactions take probably 10 to 15 minutes on the phone and less than 20 minutes in person, social distancing, delivering the vehicle to your home, work, office. We provide the paperwork. We have you sign on the back of the vehicle. We step away. And credit union members are telling us every day we're saving them days of research, hours of time, and hundreds to thousands of dollars on virtually any make or model of vehicle. I do have to give you a caveat that we cannot help you buy a brand new Tesla. That's the only new vehicle that we cannot acquire, but anything else, even a pre-owned Tesla we can get, or any other make and model of vehicle we can help you with. So that's just a brief overview of the new car part. We also keep between 75 and 150 pre-owned vehicles in inventory. We have thousands of vehicles available to credit union members from our dealer partners and all of the major auto auctions that we attend. This morning I was online and acquired a new Ford for a CalCoast member. They will get the vehicle on Friday. So that's our job and that's what we do. TrueCar. Let me talk a little bit about TrueCar. TrueCar is a product out of uh, Los Angeles. They're a referral service for CalCoast Credit Union. My company, New Car Zinc, is a certified TrueCar dealer. Let me tell you how valuable this research is. So TrueCar works to provide two things. First, they provide a referral service to dealers as does Costco. If you go to a Costco program, auto program, you're being referred to a dealer. Same thing that TrueCar does. They can refer you to a retail dealer if you want to go kick tires and drive some vehicles. They can help you do that. I think more valuable is the research that they provide. You can go online to calcoast.truecar.com and you can compare pricing on virtually any make or model of new or pre-owned car You'll come up with a bell curve once you put in the make model options on the car and get pricing on that vehicle. We use this service every single day and it helps us validate our pricing to credit union members because it's an independent third party. We can see what a great price is, what a good price is, what the market valuation is on the vehicle. So you can 
get information on all makes and models of new vehicles and on pre-owned vehicles by just going to calcos.truecar.com. And again, it just gives you the information to help you be better prepared to make a better decision and to help you drive a better buy. I mean, that's my little motto of our saying is, you know, we're, we're here to help you get the best buy we can help you get on the particular vehicle that you're looking for. And this product that uh, Cal Coast has on their website called True Car helps all of us do that. All Perfect. right, everyone. Well, thank, thank you for joining our meeting today. And of course, for more information, you can visit our website at californiacalcoastcu.org or call our member service center, 1-877-495-1600. All right, we have a lot of really great questions coming in. So can I rattle some off for you two? Sure, go ahead. All right, I think this first one's a good one for you, Kevin. Um, car dealers are advertising that you can return the vehicle if you lose your job within a year. Is there a catch? Why should I choose a credit union over the dealer with the offers out there? Uh, is there a catch? It's, it's a new product out there currently because of the COVID situation and, you know, the the dealers are not doing this themselves it's the manufacturers that are offering this through the franchise dealers and what it is is an incentive to get you to finance with them so the, the catch is is that you have to finance with them at a four five six percent interest rate they're they're not stacking items on top of each other so in other words you can't go in and get a five thousand dollar rebate zero percent financing and return the vehicle at any given time they're they're all individual offers and they're what they're trying to do is reach out and attract buyers that are afraid of being furloughed or being possibly laid off in the current situation to help them move forward in buying a vehicle the the factories have just reopened up they're starting to build cars and the manufacturers are concerned that you know there still may be a slowdown with consumers buying vehicles based on you know the the unknown possibility of being furloughed or laid off at some time in the future so that's how the manufacturers have come up with a way to possibly stimulate auto buying hopefully that answers your question thanks kevin um, I've heard that if you are pre-approved, not to tell the dealer after you've agreed on a price as they have their money on financing or financing through a dealer or then a refi. I, I would agree with that. Again, there's three parts to the purchase process, buying the new car, trading in your car and the financing. I would walk in if I was pre-approved at $40,000 at a 2.9 interest rate, I would probably keep that under my hat and just say, you know, uh, let's, let's talk about financing in, in your financing department. Right now I'm here to buy a car. I'd like to see what I can buy this car for straight out. I'm, I may finance it, but I may pay cash for it. So what's the price I can buy this car for? Again, breaking it down to the three different transactions, new, trade, and finance. Great. Um, if I recently bought a, a used car but didn't get an extended warranty, can I add it now? Um, that's a question I would defer to the credit union. I believe it depends on the age of the car and the miles on the car. Yes, that's correct. I mean, it does depend on the age and the mileage. Um, if we have a specific one off and members interested in, uh, we can take down their information and we'll give them a call. Great. Does CalCoast offer GAAP on financing? Yes, they do. Yep. Member qualifies, they do offer GAAP as part of the optional items that you can uh, apply and have installed on your loan. Great. It looks like that might be all the questions that Andreas didn't already answer. Um, so once again, Andreas C. Lamora is, um, has been on the call and he's been answering some of the questions in the question box. Um, and if you have any questions regarding um, how CalCoast can help you out, he um, will drop his information in the chat box for you as well. So you can reach out to him directly. Um, if there's any other questions, feel free to, oh, we just got another one in. Um, yes, this presentation will be sent out afterwards. 
Um, and then here's another one for Kevin and Jevin. I understand that you don't have to pay some of the fees on the contract or can it negotiate them? Is, can you please clarify? Uh, question of fees. The, t the tax and license are preset by Department of Motor Vehicles and the Franchise Tax Board. So we ask you what zip code you live in and that sets the Franchise Tax Board on the percentage of sales tax. So, you know, I, you know, you have to know where you live. So once you know that, then we will tell you what your tax and license are. Uh, those are set items that are not negotiable. Everything else pretty much is. Great. Um, should we pay for markup price? Um, just depends. Right now we have an anomaly going on that I haven't seen in 36 years of being a dealer. The challenge is, is that the manufacturers were closed down for several months on producing vehicles, which means the pipeline is empty. Dealers are now running out of vehicles and they don't foresee having additional inventory of vehicles till late August, early September. So we're seeing now ridiculous markups on, for an example, Toyota Tacomas. Toyota Tacomas right now are not a good buy. It's probably one of the best resale value vehicles out there. If I was in the market for a Tacoma, I would be waiting until September or October where the supply chain is back full and you have an opportunity to negotiate with a dealer. Because if you need to buy one right now, you are going to pay a premium and there's not much inventory to choose from. So you pretty much need to buy what's sitting in front of you. All right, Kevin, someone's wondering how much your 65 Mustang is. <laughs> right, now, <laughs> right, right now, it's not quite done with finishing a frame off restoration on the car. And uh, my fear is my wife may be listening right now, so I can't even discuss how much money I've spent on the car because I'll get in trouble. <laughs> um, so Kevin, is the car consulting that you do free for members at CalCoast? Yes, it is. Absolutely 100% free. If you need help with anything, you're out looking at a vehicle and you want a free car fax on the car, give any of my people a call. They'll be happy to walk you through the valuation of the car. They'll be happy to provide you and print out for you a free car fax. We'll be happy to give you an appraisal on your trade-in. We'll be happy to explain to you why in many instances 0% financing is not the best way to go because you're giving up a three to $5,000 incentive, which is a rebate from the manufacturer versus taking a 2.95 interest rate at the credit union. So again, we're here to be a consultant um, to help you make a better decision on the car you're looking to buy. And because we do that, that's why we see so much repeat business from, from CalCoast members. They, they like the, the differentiation on how we do business. Great. If I think my credit score might be changing soon, should I wait until I see that change or will an immediate score not necessarily re reflect right away when it comes to financing? Okay, typically what we're going to do is that's the credit score that we are going to use when we determine what the rate is going to be. Uh, so if there is no hurry to buy the car, then absolutely, I'm wait until uh, you have your financing order, and then we can go through and then once you pull your credit, that is the credit score we're going to use for financing. And there, and there are several web based products out there that will provide you a free credit score on a daily, weekly, monthly basis, and you can track your credit score to the time that it improves. Uh, the other challenge we're seeing out there is the furlough situation where folks are furloughed from their company because of the current pandemic situation. In those scenarios, I would highly suggest you hold off in applying for an auto loan until you're back employed and have a couple of weeks of time to have a current pay stub because anyone you finance with is going to be asking today for a current pay stub. If you do not have a current pay stub, the probability of you being approved on a loan does go down. Taking into consideration what you just said, would it be best to wait until September to buy a car? Also, what does it mean to pay a premium? 
if I was looking at a brand new vehicle, I would postpone it until the 2021s come out. And the reason is, is then you will see a dramatic decrease in pricing on the 2020s. And in many times the manufacturers then will increase the incentives and or the rebates on the 2020s that have not sold. Also at that point in time, you can go and test drive and look at both vehicles. Did they provide some new technology in the 2021 that you have to have? So in my opinion, I would wait a little bit if I was looking at acquiring a new vehicle at this point in time. On a pre-owned vehicle, there's thousands and thousands of pre-owned vehicles out there. Um, it's, I, don't, I don't see any difference in price point in the next 90 days on pre-owned vehicles. Great. When is the best time to buy a car? Is it during a year end? The best time to buy a car is the last five days of any given month because the dealers are trying to make quotas and to make their sales goals. And many times you have a new car manager or a used car manager that is on a bonus program and he needs to sell five more cars this month. That is by far the best time to buy a car at a retail dealership. Does New Cars Inc. offer warranties? Yes, we do. Um, the new vehicles that you acquire through us come with a manufacturer's warranty that originates with the vehicle where it was built, not where it is sold from. So if you come in today and you buy a brand new Honda Accord, you get the full manufacturer's warranty. On our pre-owned vehicles, they come with one of two warranties. One is the balance of the factory warranty. So let's say you're looking at a 2018 Honda Accord four-door LX with 24,000 miles on it, you would receive the balance of the five-year 60,000 mile warranty on that vehicle. Lastly, let's say you're looking at a 2005 Ford pickup truck that we have in stock. That vehicle would come with a three-month, 3,000 mile powertrain warranty, which we put on the vehicle free of charge. And it, on any of those scenarios, you can always upgrade with the financing at the credit union with the credit union's extended warranty program. Is it a good time to buy a new car? It's a good time to buy a new car when you as an individual need a new car. Buying <laughs> a car is a depreciating asset. It's not like going out and buying Qualcomm stock or Tesla stock and hoping that it's gonna go up in value. Cars do not appreciate, they depreciate. So the best time to buy a car is when you need a car. That's just my opinion. I don't think that, again, that and waiting till the 2021s come out to get a better price on a 2020 are the two things that I would consider. What is a good used car to buy budget? But is six, between 6,000 and 7,000? The challenge with that budget is you're gonna get an older vehicle with substantial amount of miles on the car. A six to $7,000 car is gonna be a 2006, 2007 Honda CRV with over 80,000 miles on it. Instead, I would suggest you bump up your budget to a 10 to $12,000 car and then acquire a 2013, 14 Honda Accord, Nissan, type vehicle, Toyota Corolla, finance at the credit union, spend a little more money, finance as much as you can, and have a vehicle that is much newer. The older the car you buy, the more maintenance and expense you're gonna have on that vehicle, the quicker, quickest, sooner. So again. And what are your thoughts on Mercedes SUVs? Uh, my wife has one and she loves it. Um, I'm a truck guy. I like trucks, but my wife has a 2016 GLE Mercedes and she just absolutely loves that vehicle. So, and it's on our website for sale. So if, if I sell it, I'll get in trouble, but it is on the website for sale. My mechanic told me Russell Brook Hyundai is the best place to buy a car, but it's in Garden Grove, almost two hours from San Diego. I'm trying to figure out how to get my mechanic that I trust to look at it first. Any ideas? Uh, 
is I'm assuming we're talking about a pre-owned car by the by the nature of the question. Um, I would I would ask the dealer if they would give you a 24 or 48 hour right of return option to have the vehicle inspected, or if the dealer would allow you to pick up the vehicle and have it inspected before purchase. We have a borrowed car agreement program. When a member comes in and looks at any pre-owned vehicle we have, we show them because of transparency, all the service records and the research we've done on the car, but we will allow you to take any pre-owned vehicle to your choice of mechanic to have it inspected prior to purchase. And I think today that most franchise dealers will do the same thing. When is the best time to apply for a loan? Uh, when you save them back. When you, when you saved up some money down and you have your credit score online. All right, looks like that's the end of the questions unless any others roll in. Um, thank you, Kevin and Kevin, again for presenting today. This was really great information. Um, we will be sending out a survey at the end of this session. Um, if you within the survey um, please provide your email and you'll be entered into a $50 visa card um, drawing um, no purchase necessary and you'll also receive a gift certificate for a hundred dollar gas card when you use the new cars inc services um so once again um thank you all for joining us today we hope this information was helpful and thank you kevin and jevin um we really appreciate you presenting for us our pleasure